Right, hello lads, uh, Coyote here. Um, I've been asked to do a motor rewind video because uh, some people are getting confused when you see the diagrams on the uh, internet and all the information that's bouncing around. Uh, it's a little confusing uh, how, to, how to do it, what windings to put where, etc. So I'm going to do a very basic, no bullshit uh, video uh, and try and explain it as basically but as easy as possible. And uh, show you how easy it is once you know what you're doing. So I'm going to start with this RC timer motor here. It's a uh, 4215650kV. It's uh, too big really for a GoPro, but it will do a GoPro no problem. But it's a bit overkill. Uh, it will do a next three, next five, next seven, no, no problem whatsoever. It's got bags of torque in it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wind this motor with 120 turns of 0.18 wire and that should give me around about 15 ohms per phase which um, as, as I've tested so far is plenty. Um, so what do we need? We need the motor, always useful, there's a motor database online that I'll put a link on to. Uh, we need enameled wire. Try and get that into focus. I'm using 0.18. It depends what motor you're using. Um, I got this uh, 278 grams worth of wire for six pound delivered. It was. We use. I'm using a syringe. Get from your local friendly drug dealer. Or uh, you can get it from downtown. No problem. Some people use the needle on the end. Um, I tried that a few times and I found it actually it was more hassle than what it was worth. It actually damaged the wire and created shorts, you know, catching on the edge. So I wasn't happy. I reverted to using it like this instead. Uh, and I can wind it just fine. Uh, I use the plunger too because as you're winding you want a bit of tension on it. So you just put that in the top like that and your wire still feeds through but it's under tension. You will need uh, a pair of snips, uh, long nose uh, small pliers is great, um, a little screwdriver to disassemble your motor um, and maybe a heat gun. If, uh, if the windings uh, are epoxied in you can apply a heat gun to it, melt the epoxy and unwind it. Luckily with these RC timers they're just the windings are just wound on that's it, they're just left so stripping one of these is a piece of cake. So first thing we've got to do is find the details of what you want, how many windings you want, or how, how many windings work best um, for, for that motor. Once you find those details, time to strip the motor. What you want to do is you want to snip your wires and then un carefully unwind if he could needed if you need a heat gun use it and then unwind all your wires off your stators and you will end up with that that's your motor stator no windings on be very careful not to damage it because if you take the uh, coating off uh, you can get shorts through it which you don't want now what I've done in this case which I don't normally do is I've marked one of the stators number one this is just for the video demonstration purposes you could you can do it yourself to save confusion um, because you're going to want to know what no, what numbers are what so you know which uh, which one to put on where right the, the, this motor came apart dead easy um, it's just a split ring on the back of there took the split ring off you can see how strong the magnet is Pull, pull it away, remove the windings, you end up with a ball of copper. For, for the first phase, for phase one, um, what we're going to do is we're going to start between one and two, and two is going to go clockwise. So in a clockwise motion, just like this, shut up dog, round and round and round. And then you feed the wire to the bottom, keep going around and around and around 
and around. With this motor, um, I'll get 30. I'll get 30 winds before I get to the top of the arm. So then I'll work backwards 30, give me 60, 90, and then back into the middle is 120, and right back in uh, at the bottom is where you want to be. Uh, then once I've done that, that's 120 round leg two. I want to go to leg one, and on leg one, I want to wind it anti-clockwise. So when I finish my 120th wind, I go across and then start winding anti-clockwise, like so. Again, pushing them down nice and neat. Uh, once I've done 120 winds on that one, I go to leg seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Which is this one, which should be opposite the last one you wound. It should oh, when you move around, it should always be opposite the last one. And then the one after that should be opposite your first one. So I should be on 7, then 8. 7 wants to go clockwise. 8 wants to go anti-clockwise. Once I've put 120 on that clockwise, 120 on that anti-clockwise, I then bring the wire out, snip it, and mark it up with a bit of uh, masking tape if you want, and mark it up end 1. And then I'll mark the start up, start 1. So I'll do that now, and then I'll come back when I've wound the first phase. Okay, so, um, there's the motor wound with the first phase. Started between one and two. Two clockwise, one anti-clockwise, went opposite to seven. Seven clockwise, eight anti-clockwise. And uh, I've now marked S1 for start, end one, E1 for end. So that's all you do three times over. So if you think you're fairly competent with doing that, then um, right now I'll put up a cheat sheet in the video, uh, which is a sheet I've written out, which is the, the none of the winding crap or anything. It's just basic instructions. It's dead simple. I think the dog wants to be famous. Yes, give it a shake. Uh, right, so that's the first phase wound. So now you've got to make sure that the phase is okay. Uh, what I mean by the phase is okay is, is in the uh, coil itself or the windings, don't short out with the stator. That's very important. And then the overall resistance between uh, the start and the end of the phase. Uh, to do this, you need to uh, make the ends of the enamelled uh, windings uh, conductive. So to do that, um, on this type of enamelled wire, you just heat up the end, add a bit of solder, and there you go. We'll do the same with the end. And there you go. That's the two ends conductive. To make sure it's not stated out with the state, uh, shorted out with the stator, any end will do. And touching in the middle. If the meter doesn't move on continuity, there's no short. Same with that end, no short. So now I've got 130, uh, 120 winds on each. Now I want to see how much over one phase I'm getting. We're aiming. The, the reckon you should aim for between 5 and 15 ohms, but uh, I've seen um, plenty of tests done with 30 ohms between two phases and it works fine. But I'm going to get as close as I can to 15 plus or minus a bit. That'll do me. Right, uh, first of all, I should mention, because I'm doing the basics, I'm using a basic multimeter. Now, your basic multimeter, all right, it costs a tenner and it will, it will measure resistance, but if I tap these leads together, 
it should say zero but it doesn't it says 0.4 of an ohm so when you're measuring your resistance across your phases bear in mind that 0.4 of an ohm so on the start on the end wait for the magic Ooh, I've fell off They got 7.9 ohms minus 0.4 uh, is 7.5 ohms, 7.5 over one phase. So over the two phases, it will be bang on 15 ohms, which is exactly where we want it. So for this motor, 120 turns, 0.18 wire, perfect. So now we've done that, we can now move on to phase two which will be S2 and then end 2 and then we just repeat we'll repeat the process so we'll wind the other the next two on we'll test it uh, resistance wise from the stator to each end to make sure it's not shorted and then test the phase to make sure it matches this phase if it doesn't match this phase then you've done something wrong uh, and then you'll have to revisit it uh, so I'll put the uh, the cheat sheet up again and uh, this will show you start to you start between arms five and six you wind six in a clockwise direction you wind five in an anti-clockwise direction once you finish that you go to arm 11 you do 11 in a clockwise direction 12 in an anti-clockwise direction and that is phase two complete Okay, so we're back again. Um, the second phase is done. Uh, what I've done, marked up. S2, start 2, N2, E2. Uh, again, you have to test between um, the stator and the, uh, the windings themselves. We have no continuity there. What we're looking for again to make it a perfect 15 is uh, 7.9. Check the meat leads, there should be 0.4 again. Yeah, 0.4. So, what we're looking for is uh, 7.9 minus the 4 gives us 7.5, which is the perfect allegedly 15 ohms. So, again, tin the ends of the wires, pop it on. 7.9 minus 0.4 7.5 that's brilliant so that's what we're after okay so the uh, third phase is done now uh, so again same as before uh, test if there's a short on the stator then we're looking for 7.9 which is actually 7.5 because of the 0.4 in the meter uh, which we have there yeah, there's the 0.4 in the meter and there's the 7 and the 7.9 should turn up there you go, 7.9 so now we know that all our windings are perfectly equal <coughs> what we then need to do is complete the uh, the why the 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 why is that small you probably can't pick most of this up on camera but what I'll do is where I've twisted the others up I will twist this one up too and that's from arm number well between arm uh, three and four so I've twisted that cut it. So this is all three ends now. Once we have the solder and it breaks down the insulation on it. Like so. So that's all three ends now shorted. We'll uh, trim it. 
trim it so it's nice and neat. If you can see that, I'll try and use my hand to give you some contrast. So that's the wire connection made. Now you can test between uh, all the three phases. Okay, so now all the uh, three phases are done. I've shorted out um, the end, the the three ends to make it into a Y format now. So now what we've got to do is we've got to check for balance um, on the three ends which I have here. They should all match or with this millimeter be within 0 0.1 at least. So we'll test the bottom and middle. It doesn't matter which one's which because you're testing them all. It was there for a second. There you go. 15.3, 15.4. So now I'll keep my black probe on the bottom one, go up the top one. If I haven't seen this piss poor light. There you go, 15.3, 15.4. So now I'll move the black probe to the middle and this test between the other two, if I can get the probe on it. They are 15.4 and... Yeah, 15.3, 15.4, so... And then just double check the meter. Yeah, so basically 15 ohms. Right, um, I've brought all the uh, three wires, three phases to the back, reassembled the motor, so there it is all rewound, uh, check for clearances, check for clearances to make sure uh, nothing catches, or nothing looks wrong, if it looks wrong it probably is, um, the, three, the three wires at the back it totally depends on what you want to do do with them. Um, like my original ones um, snipped, soldered, and then put um, just a thin servo lead to it because they're only going to take two amps max current. So uh, yeah, soldered some um, servo wires to them, put heat shrink down it, and then uh, cable tied it, cable tied it to the base there. And then the wire's going absolutely nowhere because these are really thin and really delicate. Um, I know if I, if I had the motor controllers, I've seen um, the gimbal controllers, the wires are pretty long on them. So you could probably take those wires straight to the motors and do the same thing. Solder them on, heat shrink them, cable tie or a bit of epoxy. So um, finishing the ends, making the ends off is totally um, a personal thing. So there you go, that's that's how you do it. Uh, feel free to add any epoxy if, if, you, if you think any of your coils might come free. But uh, that's it, you've rewound uh, Brussels gimbal motor.